So what is proportion? Essentially, if two numbers change at the same time whilst maintaining the same ratio, they're proportional. Let's take money for example. If one pound is worth $1.20, then 10 pounds is worth $12 because both sides increase tenfold and the same ratio is maintained between them, so they are in proportion. So you've encountered proportion in life and likely understand proportionality, but that's what it is. The other piece of information I wanted to tell you is you will be solving problems where you have two numbers and need to find a third. And a key to understanding solving problems like this and problems involving proportion is being able to rearrange equations. So I'll give you a brief example of how to do that to refresh that first. If we have this equation, six equals K times three, how do we find out what K is? We rearrange the equation to leave K on its own. To do this, you need to eliminate the three that it's multiplied by. To eliminate a multiplication, we divide, which gives us this. Six equals K times three divided by three. But what we do to one side, we need to do to the other side. So now we have this equation. Now we begin solving by dividing on our right side, three by three, eliminating it. Now we are here. And then we just solve to find K. 6 divided by 3 is 2, so k is equal to 2. Here we are comparing the heights of our trees. The heights and rates of growth of these trees are in direct proportion. What this means is that as one of them grows, so will the other, but they will maintain the same ratio between their heights. We have a symbol to tell us that this relationship is present. This symbol is used to say that a is proportional to b. Our first tree started with a height of 6 feet and our second tree started with a height of 12 feet. When they finish growing, tree A now has a height of 12 feet. Because A is directly proportional to B, we can now find out the missing new height of tree B. And we do this by using this formula and by inputting the values we already know for heights A and B, so the starting heights before they grew. I'll show you how and what the parts of this formula are will start to make sense. When A was six feet tall, tree B was 12 feet tall, meaning A is equal to B multiplied by a constant that we call K, the constant of proportionality. And if we input the numbers we know, we can rearrange and find K, and then we can use this to find our new missing height, even though we can't see it. Now we solve for K by rearranging our formula, to the right side, we divide the right side by 12. And what we do to one side, we need to do to the other side. So we have to do six divided by 12, giving us 0 0.5. So we found that K is equal to 0 0.5 and we have found our constant of proportionality. Now we set up our formula again and use K to find the hidden height of B. So what number multiplied by a half gives us 12? Half of 24 is 12, so 24, meaning tree B is now 24 feet tall. You need to be able to do this with squares, cubes, and roots as well. But let's try a problem featuring a squared number before moving on. When A equals 18, B equals 3. A is directly proportional to B squared. Find A when B equals 2. So we've been told that A is directly proportional to B squared. So we can set up our formula like this now. And then again, we input the numbers we already know and solve for K. I'll also solve three squared and put that as our new formula to make it easier to work with. And then solving for K, 18 divided by nine equals two. So K equals two. And now we can use K to find A when b equals 2. Inputting k into our formula, we get this now. Inputting our known values of b leaves us with this. And now we just solve to find a. 2 times 4 equals 8, so a equals 8. Here, the more balloons we put in a, the more our turtle drops in feet. B. A is directly proportional to B cubed. 
The number of balloons we popped, A, was 108, and our turtle fell three feet. How many balloons would we need to have popped to see him fall two feet? So now our formula becomes k times b cubed. 108 was equal to k times 3 cubed, and 3 cubed is 27. So solving for k, we divide 108 by 27. 27 goes into 108 four times, so our constant of proportionality is 4. Setting up our equation with this again, we have a equals 4 times b cubed. We're told to find a when b equals 2. So a equals 4 times 2 cubed. 2 cubed is 8, leaving our formula as this, which we can now solve for a. 4 times 8 is 32, so a is 32. Finally, for direct proportion, I mentioned you need to be able to solve problems involving roots too. Here, q is directly proportional to the root of r. If we input the values we know and square root 16, we are left with this. Now solving for k, we divide 2 by 4, finding it to be 0 0.5. And using that to find q when r is 49, we are left with 1 half multiplied by 7. And this is 3.5, so q is 3.5 when r is equal to 49. We just finished looking at direct proportion. And we saw that as one tree grew, so did the other. And we said that because they maintained the same ratio between their heights when growing, that they were in direct proportion. So as one value went up, the other value went up as well. But what about instead if as one number goes up, the other number goes down? That's inverse proportion. These are red blood cells and these are molecules of oxygen. And red blood cells carry the oxygen in our blood but if we hold our breath, the amount of oxygen we have in our bodies goes down. So that pattern is inverse proportion because as one number increases, the other number decreases. This is how we state that A is indirectly or inversely proportional to B. It doesn't always have to be A or B. It could be X or Y or Q or R. So that means that now this is the formula that we use y is inversely proportional to x, y equals 10 and x equals 2, when x equals 5, find y. So just as before, we're going to begin by inputting unknown values, and then we proceed to rearrange that, and we solve for k. And then using that, k, and our known value of 5 in our formula, we're able to find y. One last practice question. We will treat this problem exactly the same as when we dealt with squared numbers before. We're going to set up our formulas. We will input our values and we'll also solve our root to make it easier to work with. And then we solve to find K. Now we use this and our known value to find our missing value of Y. Trees and turtles are fun, but what about more realistic, real-world problems involving proportion and where you are much more likely to see it? So let's finish with two scenarios. You're following a recipe and you like it, but the ingredients only provide 40 cupcakes and you need to make 200 now for your friends instead or a cake sale, or maybe you just really like cupcakes now. Well, if you want to make twice as much of a recipe, you need to double the ingredients. As the amount went up, so did the ingredients, and they maintain the same ratio. Or it will taste different, or maybe not bake at all. So this is direct proportion, and all we need to do is find k to scale our recipe up. a equals 200, and b equals 40, so we can find k. This enables us to now scale up our ingredients whilst we have maintained the same ratio. If you have a certain amount of people doing a job and you decrease the amount of people doing it, then it's going to take longer. So as the number of people performing the task went down, the time taken to complete it went up. So this is inverse proportion.
we multiply the values we have together to rearrange and find k. And then we use k to find our missing values.